Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ahmad Zulfi Bianan. I am from Group Akasuki, and today I will be presenting to you about our Capsum project. Uh, let me introduce to you my team members. Okay, first we have uh, Muhammad Karim Hicham as the project leader. Second, we have Muhammad Hilman Nabil as the secretary of the group project. Next, we have Muhammad Safwan as the project engineer. The next one is Muhammad Yusof, the software engineer. The last one is Ming Ahmad Zikri as the electrical engineer. Okay, moving on to the next slide, the company background. So, our company name is uh, Akatsuki Engineering, Sri Berhad. The company vision is to be the company of choice for our clients in the global market, driven by the entrepreneurial spirit, renewable energy technology, and excellent education. As the company has a mission that to be a great starter, to deliver engineering expertise for smarter, more resilient industrial operation and go green concept. Moving on to the next slide, the problem statement that consists of five points. And the first one is wasting of time. People are spending a lot of time at the cashier. According to the streetlight data, the percentage of people that go to the mall for shopping is about 62.1% to kill. So the second point is excessive of labor, labor force. We found that there are two or more employees that needed to be placed at one counter. So the third point is calculation error. The management hardly to reduce the calculation error in purchasing process due to human error since humans sometimes make mistakes especially in calculation. The fourth point is inadequate data. This happens a lot of time in the supermarket in Malaysia especially that people are facing unprecise data about the item especially the price or the weight of the item. And lastly is the usage of electricity which we happen to know that every year electricity rate is increasing due to the demands of the consumer. We are going to proceed to our next presentation which is Objectives. So uh, Objective is a project that has a beginning and an end but without an objective it is a ridiculous shift. In order to have a successful end for a project, we need to define our project objective. So in this project, we have a few objectives. First, to increase the effectiveness of purchasing process. Second, to implement new technology in human routine. Next, to reduce the shoplifter percentage in a mall. After that, to maximize the utilizing of renewable energy as a power source. Lastly, is to reduce supply labor in the workplace. So, what is the benefit of our project to the people? First, is time consuming. As we observe, that customers spend a lot of time queue at the cashier to pay their item. By, by having our project, they can easily make the payment at the trolley by using the QR code. How to do it is by using the scanner that we located at the trolley, which made it easier. And then go to queue, queue at the long line and waiting for the turn. Next point for the benefit of contribution is precise information of the product. So, by having our smart trolley, we design a HMI screen that can show all the data or all the detail of the product, which customer can use the scanner at the trolley and check the detail of the quality, which include the price after the discount, the expiry date of the product, and the lastly, the weight of the product, which means it's more precise than us worker. Next point is to increase the observation of the admin. So with the big size of the mall, it's hard for them to observe every single product. But when they implement this our project, this smart trolley will always update the data after customer pay the item. And the data will deliver to the administrative department to be observed and know the total quantity of the item time by time. So the admin can know every time the, the quantity of the product. Lastly is renewable energy implement. So in this project, we use solar panel and turbine as an alternative of secondary uh, sources in order to reduce the power that we use directly to the from the TNB, which made our project more environment friendly. So next is our schedule of project. So this is our chat. First is the resources. So in these resources, we allocate about five people, which is they have their own position based on their skill. So next. 
For the first day, we have a conception and initiation process. In this process, it takes about 8 days to complete all the subtests. The first thing that we did is we managed to make a group of 5 people and organize the position in the team based on individual skill. After that, have a briefing to acknowledge the team of the project so we can come up with a problem statement and our objective. All the problem is solved by having a brainstorming with each other. This phase need to do it precisely to avoid unnecessary things in the middle of the process. Next, the definition and the planning phase. In this phase, we have a Madenada which is our mentor to observe and supervise all the progress in our project. So, after we have our problem statement and objective we presented to her, she approved it and we proceed by brainstorming about the flowchart or the main chart that and the design of the project. After the project execution, in this phase, we have a two tasks which is under hardware and software. At the mechanical and electrical part, due to the COVID-19, we only can finish up the process of the purchasing the trolley and barcode scanner. The equipment and making wire of the barcode scanner by me and Zikri. The most long time to take to finish this stage is a software that's been done by Yusuf Safwan Carver. It takes lots of time because it has many coding shots as scan to add, scan to delete, and QR coding. We that we complete this phase for almost 70 days, which takes half of our process. After that, we have a project testing phase, which is under this phase, we need to test the whole project to ensure it ends well at the end of the process. The most longer part is at is a programming part which is checked by Yusuf and Carol. Finally, the project will be presented today and be evaluated by the mentor and the other panel. For the report, every team member will complete the report time by time and submit to me. I'm going to proceed with the costing. Next, our calculation per unit. The function of calculation per unit is to know how much cost that we need to invest for one unit. So, the formula we use is the operation of cost per month over by quantity of unit that we produce per month. And we get on 1037 ringgit and 59 cents per unit. That is the cost for one unit. So, let's move on to our profit calculation. So, for our profit calculation, we use this formula which is growth profit margin equals to revenue yearly minus the fixed operation cost yearly. And we got about 2,292,870 ringgit and 80 cents. We have sketched two main projects for our project, which the first one is the power hybrid generation system, and the second one, a flowchart explaining about the flow process of our system. Let's see these two flowcharts. This system starts by doing setup for power generation. After that, a process which collecting three factors that can create an energy to be converted into electrical energy and the three factors are temperature, irradiance and wind speed. There are three subsystems for the power generation which are the hybrid power generator, battery power storage and battery indicator. The hybrid power generator, the collected electrical energy is measured to reach the desired set point for the system. If the voltage does not exceed 12 volt, the recovery system energy will be added. This is because the set point were adjusted to be 12 volt. If the voltage measure higher than 12 volt, there will be a cut of configuration to prevent over voltage in the flow. This flowchart is to indicate the battery storage status while charging. Four LED were used to represent the battery status. LED one is when one percent the battery is charged. LED two will represent two until fifty percent. LED three to represent 51 to 90 percent and LED4 to represent the power storage between 91 percent to 100 percent. This flowchart is used to show the battery system while the trolley being used. If the battery contains less than 20 percent, the tower lamp will be red. 21 to 80 percent will turn the tower lamp into yellow and 80 percent to 100 percent turns the tower lamp into green. As for the start in our dashboard, User will be shown the battery status of the smart trolley and advertisement data is loaded and the advertisement video will be played as the trolley being used. For each starting system of the smart trolley, the data of customer in database is cleared. There will be 4 options for customer to choose at a time, which to add items into the cart, cancelling items before the payment, to do a payment and a choice to view the latest news provided. To add items into the cart, customer just need to scan the barcode the item they desired and the data of the item will be recorded in admin database for admin to monitor the stock data 
and also into customer database. The dashboard will also display the descriptions of the item. The price of scan item will be added each time customer choose to scan to add. The weight of scan item is then measured by the weight scale to match with the weight recorded in the data description. Scan to delete plays the same role like scan to add. The difference is the scan to delete used to remove item from the cart and the data scan item will eventually be deducted from the database. Customer can click the payment button to proceed to payment. There will be a QR code and also the total price will be shown. There will be a timer 15 minutes for the system to receive the payment. If customer fail to scan the QR code within the 15 minutes, the QR code will be cleared. The information of the news will be downloaded from the API key, but it can be only be seen by customer if they desire to see the news provided. For the weight measurement, the scan items which already have the specific weight data from the factory is compared to the weight measured in the trolley. If the weight measured is matched to the data of the item, the dashboard will display the total weight measured and if the measured weight is not matched the data of the system, a reminder will be displayed. There will be three battery indicators which represent the percentage of the battery. As for example, green light to show that the battery contains 50 to 100 percent of battery. Yellow to represent 10 to 50 percent of battery. One to 10 percent will be represent as red. All the indicators will be turned off if the battery has zero percent of battery power. The registered price will be uploaded to the API key website, and when the customer scan the product. The product description displayed are taken from the website and the data is sent to customer database to get processed. The customer data uploaded to the API key can be viewed by admin only. The data registered from the customer database will be sent to admin database. There will be a button to sign in which is designed only for admin as the safety feature that prevent unauthorized person get to interact with the data except for the admin. If there is no response in a time of 15 minutes after admin tag is signed in, the system will automatically locked out. We have now the flow process of our system. Now, let's move to the project design where you can see clearly smart trolling works. The picture you are seeing are smart trolley produced by Akatsuki Engineering. We have prepared the isometric view, top view and also front view for you to know the design of our smart trolley in real life. The main components are illustrated as the figure shown. The first one is the LCD display connected to the Raspberry Pi. The LCD will much assist customer on the shopping. It will display the details of the item when it is scanned and updated news locally. Then there will be a barcode scanner. Barcode scanner is used to scan the item chosen by the customer. The scanner is also well equipped with a system that enables customer to remove the product that was already scanned without any problem. The customer can place the item already scanned on the shelf again and continue shopping. The third one is a receiver. Receiver on the first trolley will be connected to the power supply in order to charge the trolley. The receiver is designed to receive a supply from the previous trolley when it is parked as it is connected to the transmitter of the first trolley. At the back of the design, at the back of smart trolley, we can see there is transmitter which is used to transmit the supply to the next trolley. The transmitter is designed to get connected to receiver of the next trolley. Then there will be a battery case. The battery case was designed to fit size of the lead exit battery. It was placed at the bottom of the trolley to prevent from getting touched by the customer. Plus, it is suitable place to secure the supply storage. And the last main components in our project is wagging plate. The wagging plate will compare the total weight of item in the trolley with the sum of items that been calculated in the Raspberry Pi. This is to ensure that the items in the trolley is equal to the items scanned. Hi, today I will present about simulation in Simulink for power generation method as the requirement for us to use renewable energy. So for this system, we use solar power and wind power generation. Okay, first we'll go to solar energy. Solar energy system generally don't require a lot of maintenance. You only need to keep them relatively clean. So cleaning them a couple of times per year will be the job. Next is wind energy. 
Wind energy are more apparent than the disadvantages. The main advantage include an unlimited free renewable energy, economic value and lot of advantage. So, without further ado, let's jump into dashboard for power system. First, we can monitor the reading of temperature and irradiance that affect our solar and wind speed which the main energy that rotate the turbine. Next, we also can monitor output voltage of solar energy with wind energy. At the same time, we can monitor the hybrid voltage generated by both renewable energy. So here is the final output voltage that delivered to main power storage. At the left side is voltage set point controller and the right side is recovery voltage that used in order to achieve the set point. Next is battery indicator for main power storage. We provide two type of indicator which is analog and LED. LED is the simplest and easiest way to monitor. Besides, most of people will be familiar with LED indicator method. For next part, it is just a simulation to show how fast the trolley's battery charge, where is a switch that we use to simulate if there are trolleys need to be charged or not. At first, we plan just use solar power in our system. As mentioned, solar can only produce voltage at maximum of 6.2 volt and the voltage is not enough to charge the main power storage. As shown in the graph of state of charge, the main power storage does not increase even charge for 24 hours. So next, let's see for wind turbine. We found that wind turbine also generate low and unstable output voltage. Since our first idea of using only solar as power supply is failed, we came out with a solution to do hybrid for both supply. The result of the generation voltage is higher. It is better which is this hybrid system able to charge the battery from 15% to 100%. The only problem that we will deal with is the time taken to get the battery fully charged. Then, let's start explore our final power generation circuit. Here is the input source which is irradiance, temperature and wind speed. Next is solar power circuit, then wind turbine. This is all our hybrid circuit. Then we add with the recovery system to get the stable output. All the reading are divided based on color. Next is power storage circuit and the last is circuit for trolley's battery. Then we go deeper into the circuit. For solar power system, basically, we work more on single line diagram since it is easy to do hybrid and other modification. Same goes to wind turbine. Here we use DC motor as generator to generate power and we add some circuit for turbine factor since this all factor affect the generated voltage of the turbine. And last, for recovery system, we use direct DC supply to generate voltage and automatic switching system to control the voltage output. Then let's see the final result. The first graph is for solar output voltage, second is wind turbine, third is hybrid voltage, fourth is direct voltage required or we call that as recovery voltage. Here we can see we only need small amount of direct voltage for less than 6 hours and the fifth is the final output voltage without cut off system. We create cut off system in order to get stable output. All the exceeded voltage is caused of renewable energy since we can control the generation. But to solve the problem, we came out with cut off system and we get the result as in the graph number 6. The last is state of charge for main power storage. We only need less than 4 hours to charge from 15% to 100%. So let's see the simulation for the dashboard. Okay, today I will present about the project demonstration which is trolley system. In our project, we have used four programming which is NotRed, PHP, Python and Angrock server. Schematic diagram for one smart trolley. We have used battery lithium ion which is 12 volt, 
to provide to the Raspberry Pi. Output 5V from the Raspberry Pi will be provided to the barcode scanner and LCD display. Okay, before I go too far, I will explain to you about the flow of system in barcode scanner. In our project, we have provided three dashboard which is barcode tab, COVID-19 news and administration tab. The first function of barcode tab is scan to add which is the customer need to scan the item first uh, to insert the detail into the database. Uh, second function is scan to read when the customer want to remove or cancel the order customer just need to press scan to delete and the customer is ready to scan the item that they want to remove the third function is barcode is not found in the database when the customer want to add the item in the trolley but the customer notify that the notification of barcode is not found will pop up at the third right side which means the item is not registered in our database the next function is pay item using e-wallet after the customer finish purchasing the item the customer need to pay by using online account or online banking which is using qr code that we have provided if the user did not have any account online the customer need to pay at the counter the user need to make payment within 15 minutes because the system will justify the user has paid the item or they just leave it the trolley without any payment when the customer press payment button the system will reset the barcode tab dashboard to initial the fifth function is battery indicator the user can monitor the battery last span you depend on the light indicator the sixth function is advertisement video when the customer press scan to add the video advertisement will be appear at the barcode tab dashboard why we want to implement this function in our project because we want to commercialize brand of our client the second dashboard is COVID-19 news due to the COVID-19 in Malaysia we have provide a dashboard to show a status of coronavirus that has occurred in Malaysia our system is provide the date region confirmed cases that recover active cases statistic of coronavirus and lastly is chart of COVID-19 occur for that day. For administration tab dashboard, we want to ensure the administration user also can access in NotRec dashboard. So admin user can check the database directly from the trolley. So we apply login and all sign in system to avoid from customer open the database. For PHP My Admin Database Interface, like I said before, if the user and me want to monitor both of database, they need to open the PHP My Admin Database. In PHP My Admin Database, there are two databases which is Administration Database and Customer Database. To connect Angrok server with localhost, we just apply one database server to control and monitor other web server meaning that we can produce a lot of trolley by using one database and road server has provided a good service to link the database server with the trolley
for the recommendation part for project, we do have some recommendation to be made or to be improved in the future. So the first one is the map and navigation for smart trolley in the supermarket. So map and navigation help to reduce more time spent in finding groceries. Second one is the an element of renewable energy as power source. For solar renewable energy, a dual axis solar can be made to increase its efficiency. And the other is adding some cooling system to reduce power losses. And the last one is the automatic movement with track. This is to ease the burden of customer in pushing the trolley. As for conclusion for our group project, first one from this project we are able to achieve all three objectives which is implementing new technology in human routine maximize the utilization of renewable energy as power source and reduce the surplus labor in workplace the second one from this project we are able to come up with this technology with a recovery system as mentioned and presented by my team members the third one is we are able to face or respond to the Industrial Revolution 4.0 and the last one, this smart trolley are applicable or available to all shop, retail store or supermarket. So that will be all from me. Thank you.